All right, in this tutorial, what we want to do is show you how to edit content that's already been added to your course. In particular, I'm going to show you what the little icons do throughout Moodle, and I'm going to show you how you can move things around and change the uh, location and the placement. So when you first log into Moodle, you're not going to see any icons. It's going to be sort of hard when you first log in to figure out how you get started. So if you remember from the previous tutorial, the first thing you want to do is click the Turn Editing On button. Now this button exists in two places. The first one is the upper right hand corner and the second one is under the administration block if you click the turn editing on right here. Both of those links will do the exact same thing. Now I'm going to click on this one. And what you'll notice is certain icons are going to appear throughout the course. Now the bad news is that the icons tend to be kind of small. But the good news is they're used consistently throughout Moodle. So that whenever they're going to have uh, a delete option, they're always going to use that X, for example. The other good news is if you're ever confused about what an icon does, for example, if I want to know what this does, I just mouse over it, and the browser will tell me that this one does the hiding. Um, up above it, uh, this one will do the deleting. So it's nice. If you ever have any questions, you just mouse over it, and it'll tell you. So what you have here are um, icons that are used consistently throughout the class, as we covered, or throughout the program. As we covered previously, there are ways that you can change the theme in Moodle. What I want to point out is that I'm using the default theme right now. If you've changed your theme, the icons are going to look a little bit different. However, regardless of the theme, the placement of the icons is always going to be the same. So if things look a little bit different, don't be alarmed. Uh, there's, everything's going to operate the same. So what I want to talk about first is how to modify the blocks. As you know, the blocks appear to the right and the left. And if you want uh, to look up here, every block has certain options. Um, these options are all pretty much the same. The eye will hide something. So for example, if I want to hide the search forms, I just click the eye. And when the page refreshes, what you'll notice is the little icon has the uh, a shut eyelash. You can delete something right here by clicking the X. That will remove that particular block. Now, if you accidentally delete something, you can add it again at any given time. Now, right here, I'll demonstrate that. If I delete this, it will go away. The search forms block will no longer appear in the course. You can move something up. You can move it down. And in this case, you can move it to the right or the left. So if I wanted to move the participants block up one, I just click the move up the up arrow. And that block will then be moved up above. Um, and it will appear first. If I wanted to move something from the right to the left, I just click, uh, in this case, I'm going to the right hand column. I click move left. And it will move that block over to the left of the screen. Or if I want to move something back again, You'll notice it went all the way to the bottom. I just click the, the move right, and it'll move it right over to the uh, other side of the screen. So the blocks are pretty straightforward. Uh, you can do some very basic editing with them. Basically, you can change where they appear on the page. You can delete them. Now, you're going to notice that some blocks, like this messages block, does not have uh, any icons next to it. The reason for that is this is something that we've set up as a server default. It's there by default. It appears in every course, and you can't move it. You can't delete it. That's just where it's going to appear. Now, if you need to add a block, at the very bottom of the right-hand column, you're going to notice the blocks, and then with an Add drop-down menu. If you go here, you can add any of the blocks um, that are available on your server. In this case, these are the ones that are turned on. So you can add blog tags. You can add latest news. You could add quiz results. Um, there's a lot of different blocks that are available, and you can take a look at these and pick the one that's going to work best for you. So that's basically what happens with the, with the blocks. Now next what we want to talk about is the content. Now what you're going to notice is um, a couple different options. If you're in the weekly mode, this first one is the module 0. You remember that in the weekly mode, the first one does not have any data associated with it. So you can't hide it. You can't really do anything to this particular block. But all the other blocks can either be hidden or they can be moved. 
So what you'll notice is if you click this I, which I'm going to do now, everything in that block becomes gray. Now if it's gray like it is now, that means students can't see it. And what you might want to do is hide a block, for example, not a block, I keep saying that. What you want to do is hide a, a week or a topic. And you can do all the editing, get it ready for the students, and then reveal it either when it's ready or when that at the right point in the semester. So I'm going to reveal that week. What you have up here is the show only week one. So what that will do is if I go to week three and I click show only week three, it will show you the module zero and it will show you week three and everything else will be gone. Some faculty like to turn this on so that when they log on they only see that particular week. They're not distracted by the other weeks or the other topics that are available. It's really important though to note that if you uh, have this feature enabled right here, uh, so if you're only showing week three, that does not mean that the students only see week three. This is a user um, preference, so when the students log in, don't be, um, don't, don't have the impression that the students are all of a sudden not going to be able to see the other weeks, because they will be able to see them. They'll be able to go in and you know, view anything that are in the other week. So some faculty have clicked that button and mistakenly thought that, you know, the quiz that they added, the students can't see when in fact they could. So it's important to keep that in mind. So I'm going to keep that on for now. <clears throat> and actually I'll turn it back off. And what I'll do is I'll show you how you could move a week up or down. If you were to click this button, it will move this week down and this week will automatically become week two. And the week below it will will become week one. So you'll see that the week one is now the importance of identifying your audience. And if I click the down arrow, all of a sudden um, it's in the second week and it's, it's moved down. The contents have changed. Now what I want to do is go into talk about how you can edit this, uh, these options, these tools that are already in your course. Now you'll notice that the very first uh, right here, this didn't change because this is a title that I gave um, this particular block, uh, this particular topic. So if I want to change this title, what I want to do is click this little edit button, the edit summary button. And I have the ability to change this uh, text to whatever I want. Now a lot of times I add a summary because it's going to let the students know what the title of the topic is. Um, maybe give them some directions, provide a little note that they're sure they're bound to see. So I've moved things around, so I need to move this to title to week one, uh, week one. And if I want, I could use the uh, little tools here to make the font, change the font, make it bold, that sort of thing. Now again, if you have any question about what these do, you could just mouse over it and you can find out how um, to change something to bold. If you don't know what this does, you can mouse over it and it'll tell you it's insert a web link, that sort of thing. So when you're done, you can save changes. And you'll notice that you, you've changed this uh, summary for this particular week. Now the other, um, what you see here, these are all activities and resources. And in the next tutorial, we're going to show you how to add a resource or an activity. Well, what we want to do is discuss the little icons here. This is going to indent something. So if I wanted to indent the, um, for example, assignment two, I just click the move right button and that icon will then, or that item will then appear indented in this particular week. You'll notice that it's been moved to the right. If you move it to the left, it will do the opposite. It will unindent it. If you move something up or down, you could change the location. So if I want to hit move right here, what you'll notice is the page refreshes and you have these little boxes. And whatever box you click, that's where it's going to move the item to. So for example, if I click this um, right here, the very first box is going to make it the very first item. If I click right here, it will put it directly above, in this case, the visibone.com link. So I want to make it the very first item, so I click the very first box, and it will automatically move it there. The nice thing is, compared to some of the other learning management systems, you don't have to hit move, move, move. You don't have to hit it again and again. You just 
click it and it will go there. Now this edit uh, update button, this little uh, hand with the pencil, this is going to let you update the settings for that tool. Now this is a little tricky but uh, keep, keep this in mind. The edit um, options are going to vary depending upon what sort of tool you're, or what sort of resource you're editing. So for example, if I want to click that, I could change the name of this assignment, I could change the due dates. If I click this, I could change the location of the URL that it's pointing to. So keep in mind that the properties or the um, editing options are always going to vary in this case depending upon the link. And we're going to get into that in a little bit later. The uh, delete option will remove that assignment or that link from your course. The hide I icon will hide it from the students. And this is a group icon and we will talk about groups later but what this icon does is gives you the opportunity to um, make something so that it's, it's reserved for particular group. Now finally we're pretty much done here with covering the settings showing you how to modify pre-existing things but these drop down menus are what we're going to talk about in the next tutorial and what this will do is give you the ability to add new icons, new links, new quizzes, new assignments to your course and that's what we're going to cover next. But for now you should know how to edit any pre-existing links, how to move them around, how to change the location of blocks.